All right, and uh, welcome everyone to our next le lecture. Uh, this is the Cry Engine Programming Lecture Series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor. This lecture is going to be on flow graph programming. This is lecture 10 on the game stage 01. Now this lecture depends upon the fact that we paid attention in lecture 9 where we set up the parameters uh, for the game that we're proposing. And we're going to do the game logic design. That's the purpose of what we're going to be doing in these future lectures. So if you recall from the last lecture, we were to create four files. We were to create three NPC files that had information about each NPC. And the, the suggestion was that uh, we set these files up, each, each of you set your files up exactly the same way as you set them, as you see them here, with the same values in them. And the reason for that is so that when we go through them, uh, none of us are surprised about what we get. And, and for the PC, the player character, that is you or me, um, the, the uh, data that's in there is a little bit different from these other three, so pay attention to that. And of course, please remember to use uh, Notepad when you do this. Okay. Now, when you complete those files, make sure they have the XML extension and then uh, place all four of the files in the game SDK folder with the name shown and with the XML extensions. Our next task is to be able to create a flow graph that will allow us to access any one of these four files, the, any one that we choose. Well, there's many ways that we can do it, but the way that I've selected here is we're going to use the input key from debug. You need to simulate an action that will require an access to one of the game XML documents. Well, this can be done with the debug input key node. What will happen with this is that uh, whenever I display, whenever I press a key, it will activate the display message and it will show the key for that code. Now, we're going to be using the numpad keys on our, on our keyboard because in the game, uh, they're not really used for anything else. So we can use them in the game in order to simulate uh, accessing the different XML documents. We'll use the numpad keys 1, 2, and 3 to access the NPC documents. And we'll use the numpad key 0 to access the uh, PC document. Okay, so here's the schema for doing it. What we'll, we'll use the number. Okay, so what we find is that the the code from the from using this here, this previous setup here, we'll see that the code when we press numpad one is uh, np underscore one lowercase. That's the code for it. So if we put the code for that key inside the input key then the only time this output is activated is when that particular key is pressed. If, for example, if we go back here and there's nothing in here, this will now show me any key that's pressed. This will activate on any key that's pressed if key equals is left blank. However, if I put a key value in there, this input key node will only be activated when that key is pressed. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a message come out here that will say npc underscore 01. Uh, well, this is actually the name of the XML file that I would wish to open, that I'd like to activate. So that's the next step you want to do. So set your flow graph up like this. If you're following along, if you're not, take notes and then, you know, do this for a homework assignment to make sure you get this part working. Remember, you just do a small step at a time and then test it. Now, with that said, I got four numpad keys will be used for accessing the XML files. Uh, the NP underscore zero is for the PC data. So what I've got here now is I have one, two, three, four input keys. This one will only activate when the number pad one is pressed. This one will only activate when number pad two is pressed, number pad three is pressed, and uh, NP underscore zero is pressed um, so so that uh, 
when when these keys are pressed, that's when these individuals will be activated. What I really want to do, I want to be able to, to access this node here, the open document one, if you recall, because this node will be uh, will open the selected XML document. So somehow I need to convert the NP underscore three, that number pad thing, to a string that has the name of the XML document. Right here, when I press this, I'll see that message, but the show port right here of this node will only allow one single input connection. If I try to put this up here to show, it won't take it. It'll either do one or the other. So I got sort of an issue there that I have to address. But the point is I do need four of these uh, input keys, each of them uh, with the different key codes on them to be activated. Okay, so the next thing I got here is that I'm using this, the numpad key must be converted to one of the XML file names. And this is how I'm going to do it. This is done with the string node class using the set string node. So what I'm going to do here, when I, when I press uh, the number pad one key, when that's pressed, it's going to set so the output becomes npc underscore one, which happens to be the name of my XML file for, NP for the non-player character one. When I press numpad two, this is now going to set it so that it's the file name npc underscore o2 which is the name of my second XML file for the NPC. When key three is pressed, the same thing happens for NPC three. When, uh, NP, when number pad zero is pressed, I now get PC, which is the name of the XML file for my player character. So I've converted the key strokes, uh, the key presses, into a string. And that's what the set string does for me. And of course, eventually, I want this somehow to go to uh, execute the open document and have that name go into the file. Well, again, these input ports will only take one input. Uh, so, and I have it set up here. So, if it's a, a success, uh, it will show, and if it's a failure, it uh, gives a message that it failed, didn't open the document. So, what I'm going to use now is the any node from the logic node class is used to get the string from the active set string node. So I'm using this one here, the any node. In other words, what happens here is that when this gets activated, this goes in here, this string, npc underscore one is now set to the output, and that now goes to the file name and also executes the open document. At the same time, it activates uh, the, uh, the message here so that you see which file name it went to, and the success activates this one here. When this gets activated, it goes in and it comes out, uh, and it'll now say NPC02. An NPC02 file will now be uh, open. And then same way for this one here, and the same way for the PC document. So depending on which one of these um, keys are activated here on the left will depend upon the string that is fed into the file, and each of these strings represents the name of one of the four XML documents. Okay, so that's the schema and set it up and make sure that it works. Okay. All I did here is I made the flow graph easier to read and I added a comment. It's always good to have comments. I just clicked on these little buttons up here. Okay, so instead of having something like this, by clicking on all these little buttons up here, I now have something like this. And this is just uh, an easier way of putting everything together, uh, so to speak. So if you notice the input ports, only the input ports here on the logic any node uh, are, are showing. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to create a black box. And that's really a way of simplifying uh, flow graphs. First, you should drag your mouse around, holding down your left button, uh, all the nodes you want in the black box. And you can experiment with this. Don't forget a control Z, as in zebra, undoes anything that you do. I think you have up to 50 control Zs by default. So you drag your left mouse around here uh, with the nodes you want in the black box. You right click and this pop-up menu comes. 
it's add a comment and you come down here to where it says add black box okay and then you click on that dude all right once you've done that uh, this strange looking thing here will come up well you should type in the name you want to call your black box and uh, and then once you do that here it was XML file selection once you do that you want to click on this little arrow key right here where this big arrow is showing okay once you get that done now there's your black box so instead of seeing all the stuff that we've been looking at what have you we now just see a box and it just says well that's what you got there but we're not going to show you the details which is fine if I want to see the details all I have to do is click on this again right here and it'll open for me and I'll see I'll see this kind of stuff inside it so I can see what's inside it okay all right so we still have more work to do on this uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention and feel free to leave comments and suggestions as we continue through the series and uh, I'll stay uh, and answer any questions and if you have anything I like you'd like for me to go over I'd be happy to do so Okay, and thanks again for your attention.